The YouTube channel Nighthawk and Light recently posted an interesting video showing how you can float an ordinary screwdriver on a jet of compressed air. So I've got my compressed air gun here at about 100 psi. Let's see if we can get this to work. It's a pretty neat trick. And so uh, me being me, I wanted to find out what was going on here. So I built uh, sort of a screwdriver placeholder. This is just a piece of plastic that I turned on the lathe with a steel shaft sticking out. And I tried the same thing, and believe me, I tried for many minutes, and this doesn't work. So what kind of weird magic law is this? Only actual screwdrivers are allowed to float on air? Uh, but I actually learned some interesting stuff about fluid dynamics, and I thought I'd share it with you in this video. If you're going to try this yourself, the trick is to hold the screwdriver away from the handle and then position the air jet just about vertically and put the screwdriver over the air jet just about like this so that the air jet is pointing right about here on the screwdriver. And you'll feel as you're blowing air across it that the screwdriver kind of locks into place and then you can let go and it will float there. So of course I tried it on other screwdrivers. This one works just fine as well. This one's a bit heavier. But when I tried it on my own homemade sort of screwdriver, it doesn't float. And I tried for many minutes to make this work. So what's going on here? This, it's almost exactly the same uh, shape and weight and weight distribution as the real screwdriver. And I started thinking that the upper edge here was kind of a critical part of this whole thing. So I made another fake screwdriver, and this one actually has a rounded top. So you can see one of these is square cut and the other is rounded, and I turned both of these on the lathe. This one floats just fine, and this one doesn't float at all. It falls no matter what you do to it. So what's happening is the air is rushing out of the nozzle and flowing around the screwdriver handle. And in the case of the normal shaped screwdriver handle, the air mostly sticks to the surface of the handle until it gets to a point on the back edge here where it suddenly separates and returns to its uh, straight direction or returns to a flow that's um, dominated by the jet. And what that's called a separation, because mainly it's, it's flowing along and sticking to the surface and then getting to the point where the forces trying to pull it away overcome the forces that are pulling it down to the surface. And in this region here, there's a low pressure zone, and that's actually what holds the screwdriver up. So we've got gravity tugging down on the screwdriver's uh, center of gravity, and then we've got this lift force generated by the low pressure zone behind the handle. Now in the case of the square handle, uh, there's a lot of turbulence created by that sharp edge there. So as the air flows around that sharp edge, the air starts, you know, eddy currenting and flowing around and swirling and all kinds of stuff. And that actually disrupts the area of this low pressure zone. So instead of having a really nice piece of vacuum up in here, well, I mean, a low pressure area holding the screwdriver up, we've got this swirling mess of air. And so we don't actually get any lift out of this. This is exactly the same reason that tennis balls and golf balls have uh, a surface texture to them. You know, golf balls have dimples and uh, tennis balls are fuzzy. So when they're moving through the air, that fuzz or dimpled surface actually creates turbulence and that overall creates a smaller low pressure zone behind the ball. If the balls were smooth, then the air would stick to them very well and you'd actually get this uh, really good low pressure zone behind it, which would slow down the ball or make it travel not as far. So just to make sure that there aren't some weird physical laws that only apply to screwdriver shaped objects, I turned a solid section of plastic uh, with the smooth edge up here and this actually floats just fine. So that proves that we're really only interested in, in this upper edge up here and the rest of it doesn't really matter. Uh, then thinking that I understood this well enough, I turned a cone shaped screwdriver lookalike and thinking what would happen is the air would you know, smoothly flow over the cone and there would be no way we could have this low pressure zone because the cone would basically be taking up that space and this one would clearly fall because this wouldn't generate any low pressure zone. Actually, this one floats just fine. I was really surprised, but this one's actually even more stable than all the others. So clearly there's still separation going on and there's still enough low pressure to hold this up. So then I turned a more extreme cone and this one falls. So I eventually got the angle, the taper is gentle enough here where in this case the air flows smoothly down the taper and there's no spot where we can generate this low pressure zone to hold the thing up and it falls. So we have two ways of sort of making the screwdriver fall. We can either have a sharp edge which causes turbulence and that disrupts the low pressure zone like this or we can have a really, really gradual taper and the air just smoothly flows down there and there's no way to create this 
this uh, low pressure zone behind it because the cone is basically taking up that space. To investigate this a little bit further, I built a simple flow demonstrator box. And so I've got an acrylic uh, sort of open topped box and I put a small aquarium pump in there with a hose connected to it and I punched a bunch of small holes in the hose and then wrapped the hose up in filter floss. So then I have a very continuous stream of uh, liquid coming down and the liquid is rheoscopic fluid. It's basically very fine glitter in water and it shows the flow patterns that the water is uh, experiencing. I made a couple dummy mock-ups of the different shapes that I tried for floating screwdrivers and um, you know, be aware that this is totally not a scientifically accurate sort of representation of what's going on in air because we're in water now and I didn't compensate for all the differences there. But this will give you a visual indication of what's going on. And you can see that there's actually a pretty big difference between having a smooth edged box shape and a sharp edged box shape. It's hard to see all the turbulence caused by the sharp edges of the box shape but you can see on the smooth edged box shape one, sort of like the normal screwdriver handle, there's swirling, there's sort of a backwards flowing uh, region of fluid. So that indicates that there's low pressure there because that fluid is actually flowing backward toward the screwdriver handle. You've probably seen a similar phenomenon if you've ever driven behind a pickup truck that's got like dried leaves or like a plastic bag in the pickup bed. You'll notice that as the truck drives along, the bag and leaves are not blown out of the truck. In fact, they're blown forward, they're blown toward the cab of the truck because the air is circling, circling around the back of the tailgate and blowing backwards and that's actually what causes drag on in, in cars. If you're interested in playing with fluid dynamics in a fun sort of way, I've recently put plans online to build one of these fluid demonstrator discs and this is actually the project that I showed recently at Maker Fair. This is a super easy build. It really only takes about an hour spread out over a whole weekend and you can get all the parts online for it. The disc is filled with this rheoscopic fluid that I mentioned that you can buy online and when you spin the disc the motion of the top and bottom surfaces of the disc agitate the fluid and you get turbulence out at the edge here. In the middle you still have that smooth region, that laminar flow region uh, that was causing all the drag and allowing us to levitate screwdrivers. Okay, see you next time. Bye.